Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and we're doing a third part of the series on a 1954 Nash Healy, um, actually it's a head of some sort, and this happens to be a manifold portion of it. We've already done quite a bit of weld repair. We went to one side and, and we ground it, uh, we, we prepped it with the machine, we welded it. Uh, we came to this other side and we really welded it, but we have a little excessive buildup. Now this surface right here is pretty critical, and uh, we're not going to machine this surface flat, but what we are going to do is we're going to take these little nubs off, this little extra uh, aluminum, just so we can clamp it down and hold it flat while we do the final welding. So just want to show you a file that we use. If you use a standard file, you're going to end up loading it up and it's not going to work for you. So this right here is, uh, it, it's got all kinds of names to it, but it, it looks like a half moon. It's a very aggressive, it's for soft metals. Uh, you, can, you can use it in auto body and soft metals and things like that. You can also find it in uh, just about any tool magazine. Again, my, my favorite magazine is McMaster Car, so I found one there and uh, they're, you know, they're not cheap. They're about 30 bucks a piece. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to hand hand finish this just so I can turn it over, clamp it down, and do my final prep and welding. Anyway, you, you can see it's a pretty aggressive file, and I'm not going to do anything special other than try to maintain this plane right here. And when I start uh, filing uh, an, an inch outside this area, I'll know that I've taken off enough. Okay, now, now that I've hand filed this thing down, I, and I've got it down pretty good, it's still got some fine scratches that I need to polish out, but I, I just want to see how much distortion I really did get. So if I put a straight edge up here, and I, you know, what I'm, what I'm looking for is any kind of gap that's showing up. And I don't have a lot of gap. Right where I welded, there's a, a little bit of distortion and I can put a business card under there. Just, just about one, in, one inch on each side of the weld. So, got a little wowie right there. Now, what I haven't done yet is I haven't turned the part over and completely welded the back side. So what I'm hoping for is to eliminate some of that just by turning it over, back grinding, and welding again. So let's do that. We'll uh, get with you in just a few minutes. Okay, now we, we took the part, and as, as you know, it was pretty flat, but we went ahead and put it back on this head here and tightened it down to four bolts, and if you look, there's absolutely no gap whatsoever. So we pulled it down tight. We've got a final weld we have to put over the top here. So we're hoping it, that that kind of offsets some of the stresses. Uh, still got oxides. The, the weld punched through in several places, but I'm gonna hit lightly just to get rid of the oxides and do a final cap pass on here. So here we go. Hey guys, this episode of Take Time is brought to you by Napotnik Welding Supplies. They're giving away this Aesop Rebel welding machine. For a chance to win this machine, join their email list by clicking this link. Now let's get back to welding.
Okay, now we've uh, we've pretty much finished this head. You know, what I did is I spot faced uh, the, the hole here, uh, redrilled them, just a rough redrill. So if they need to uh, bore them out just a little bit bigger, they can. Uh, anyway, I put plenty of weld reinforcement in here and left it as is. There should be no interference whatsoever. And again, you know, as I welded this, it cleaned up a little bit. Uh, don't be afraid to attack something like this. Uh, just, just make sure that you do preheat it. Uh, use 4043 and what I noticed is that as, after it cooled off here I checked the credit card to see if I could put the credit card in that gap that I had done earlier and I can't yeah, so it, it straightened itself out what I did notice is that I can go from end to end and there's a little bit of wiggle in there so just by hand pressure I'm holding it down and so there's no stresses in this thing. So I've equalized the stresses, got the weld on the inside and the outside. I think this is uh, pretty flat and uh, really pretty good to go. So uh, uh, Chris and Robert, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna tighten this down and button it up and send it back to you. And I appreciate you sending it to us because it's a neat little project. So uh, thank you for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. To stay up with the latest TIG welding technology and education, Subscribe by clicking the button below.